the day we're taking a look at these NCAAF matches, which are happening on Saturday, September 10, 2022. And giving you match breakdowns, betting tips and predictions in general on these games. Welcome back to High Stakes, let's get straight into it, also, don't forget to subscribe to get notified as soon as we release these sport prediction videos, and if you would like more betting tips and predictions then check out our Patreon in the link down below. Our new Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. Multiple plans are available for each and every one of you, you can get 30 extra betting picks all the way up to 360 extra betting picks per month. Stop wasting hours of your time searching for bad betting picks that ends up costing you a lot of money. Join the high stakes Patreon now and get the best betting picks. Going back to our video we will give you two betting picks for each game, a team pick and a total pick based on facts and detailed explanation. So make sure to watch our videos till the end so you don't miss any of our picks. Middle Tennessee State vs Colorado State. Both teams were absolutely steamrolled in their season opening contests. Each squad scored only 7 points and lost in blowout fashion, with Middle Tennessee failing by 37 and Colorado State by 44. With that said, there's a big difference between losing to a team making their FBS debut and one that was in the college football playoff last season. Middle Tennessee didn't do anything offensively against the Dukes, and while they should be able to do something on offense here, it's hard to have faith in a team that was just mangled by a team that was in the FCS last season. That's no shade on James Madison as the Dukes were a powerhouse in the FCS, but making the transition to FBS is supposed to be a challenge. Middle Tennessee was a pushover in that contest and based on their performance, you can't back them here, even against a mediocre group of five squad. The Rams pick up the victory here to even their record. Our team pick is. Colorado State Rams minus 10.5 runs. Neither offense in this game played well in week one blowouts. Look for this week to be more efficient, but both teams are dealing with new players in key areas. These teams have not had a chance to get their offense rolling, and I think week two will show similar struggles. Both teams will try to establish run games that went nowhere last week. I predict both offenses to continue their red zone struggles, leading to a low scoring affair. Our total pick is under 56.5 points. UNLV vs California. UNLV has been anything but a football power in recent years as their last winning season came back in 2013, that's their only winning campaign dating back to 2004. The Rebels hope to improve to 2-0 on the season as they take the field in this contest on the road. Against Idaho State, UNLV led only 10-7 after the opening quarter of play, but broke the game open with a 35-point second quarter to take a commanding 45-7 advantage at the half. The Rebels cruised from there to get the win. UNLV rolled up a commanding 554-241 edge in total offense, picked up 23 first downs while allowing 13 and held a 30-24 to 29-36 advantage in time of possession. For good measure, the Rebels forced the game's lone turnover. Both teams come in off wins in their season openers, but let's face it, they each knocked off an FCS program at home. This one isn't going to set the world on fire. Both starting quarterbacks were solid in week one with Brumfield throwing four touchdown passes, or as many passes as he had fallen incomplete. Cal got a solid showing out of Plummer in his first start, and they are at home in this contest. Perhaps more importantly, the Golden Bears were effective on the ground, and they have home field advantage in this contest. UNLV has to prove that they can play well on the road in order to have faith in them. Take Cal and give the points here as they improve to 2-0. Our team pick is. Golden Bears minus 12.5 points. UNLV kicked off its season with a resounding 52-21 victory over the Idaho State Bengals last Saturday evening. Doug Brumfield threw four touchdown passes, all in the first half and the Rebels broke it open early with a huge second quarter. Brumfield also completed 21 of 25 passes for 356 yards, allowing them to coast to an easy victory in the second half. Wide receiver Ricky White scored two touchdowns and racked up 182 receiving yards. Both White and Brumfield sat the entire second half. They finished with 405 passing yards total in the game with backup Harrison Bailey taking the reins in the third and fourth quarters. California was one of the lowest scoring teams in the Pac-12 last year, finishing with only 22.1 points per game. The Bears figured to have some early problems offensively after losing their leading passer, rusher, and receiver from last season. That showed on the opening drive last week against UC Davis when they were intercepted. Although Plummer looked good in his debut, none of these clubs are capable of blowing the top off. UNLV averaged a pedestrian 19.6 points per game last season and is a completely different club on the road. I anticipate most of the points coming from Cal here in a 28-10 type of game. The total is opening at 49, but expect that to creep down as we head closer to game time. Our total pick is under 49 pointers. 
Houston vs. Texas Tech. The Cougars were dealt a tough one when last year's rushing leader Alton McCoskill went down with an injury in August and is out for the season. Fortunately, Tazhin Henry is poised for a big season. The senior accrued 500 rushing yards last season. Houston has plenty of weapons at WR. Nathaniel Dell brought in 1329 yards in 2021 and 50 last week. The Cougars' offense was dominant last season and should be just as good this year. The Cougars' defense is also a strength. There were no weaknesses last year, ranking 15th against the pass and 12th against the run, plus they accrued a ton of sacks and interceptions. They lost a few players to the NFL and have some inexperience at quarterback. The Red Raiders have plenty of experience at RB. Todd Brooks, who led the team with 568 yards, along with Sir Roderick Thompson is back. Thompson collected 49 rushing yards last week. The program lost the top receiving threats from 2021, but is counting on a productive year from junior W.R. Miles Price who recorded 523 yards and 39 yards in the opener. Texas Tech usually has a strong offense that is especially productive in the air. This particular offense should be no different. The Red Raiders' defense is often a weakness. This was evident last season, landing 118th in pass defense, while the rush defense was decent, standing 54th. They lost 2021's tackling leader and a few top DBs. The pass defense was decent last week, allowing 208 yards. The Houston Cougars avoided the upset defeat last week with a triple overtime road against Utsa of the CUSA. This will be another difficult road environment for the Cougars in Lubbock. The Cougars only posted 346 total yards against Utsa while allowing 441 yards. Furthermore Texas Tech actually beat this Houston team by a 38-21 score in the season opener last season. The Red Raiders are known for an air raid style of offense and I expect a productive game from the passing unit against a Cougars defense that surrendered 337 passing yards against Utsa last week. Red Raiders QB Donovan Smith had plenty of action last season and has experience. He connected on 88% of his pass attempts last week. Texas Tech Red Raiders minus 2.5 points. The Cougars were lights out in the final quarter, keeping possession for 10 minutes and 30 seconds in driving 77 yards on 18 plays. The drive ended with Bubba Boxa kicking a 35-yard field goal with 26 seconds remaining for a 24-21 lead. Toon ran for three first down conversions in the final drive of regulation, including two during which he scrambled out of the pocket after not finding an open receiver. He changed the game for the Cougars after they were outplayed for the first three quarters. They need to wake up for this road matchup against the Red Raiders. Texas Tech scored touchdowns on their first eight possessions of the game. Todd Brooks and Sir Roderick Thompson will share the carries at running back much like they did late last season for new coach McGuire. Brooks had six carries to seven for Thompson, whose 48 yards pushed him past 2,000 for his career. Thompson caught a 30-yard TD from Smith before the quarterback was lifted with the game firmly in hand. Smith figures to get a ton of time with this recent injury to show. They threw for 264 passing yards per game last season, even with show missing nine games. Texas Tech averaged 30.5 points per game last season and figures to build significantly on that number this year after their 62-point explosion last week. Tyler Show got hurt and will likely miss this game against Houston, but Donovan Smith is more than capable of shouldering the load after he threw four touchdowns on 16 attempts last week. The Cougars were sluggish for the majority of last week's game against Utsa, but came alive in a spirited fourth quarter. I expect the Red Raiders to win here, but the Cougars will put up their fair share of points. The total has gone over in four of Texas Tech's last six home games. Our total pick is over 65.5 points.